Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where you talk, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, have you had a plumbing disaster lately? Uh, let us know. Down. Or he, you know, major house system disaster because they're all they can all be pretty bad. Electrical, plumbing, heating. Uh, if you live in a hot area, cooling. Uh, so feel free to share your sob stories down in the comments. Uh, meantime, let's dive into some pens. So these are the pens I've been using this week. Um, some of them for a well, month or more. <laughs> uh, we have from left to right, Omas Ogiva. We have a Aurora Optima. We have a, a Pilot Custom 743. Plat, I'm sorry, Pelican M1000. A Lamy 2000 Amber Black. Pilot Custom 823, Lamy 80, and finally a Sailor 1911 Standard. As always, I will be doing my writing samples in this Cognitive Surplus Jellyfish Theory Notebook. So, my first pen is the Omas Ojiva. I uh, recently filmed my revisit to this pen. I can't remember if it was this week or last week, but recently I... I filmed the writing sample quite a while ago and then the talking just recently. And lately I've been putting uh, Omas gray ink into it and that's what's in it right now. If you got a sympathy card from me, I'll tell you later why I'm bringing that up. Um, it would have had this ink in it. So it has a medium extra flexibile nib. I am curious for somebody out there to do a video comparison of the current iteration of this pen with the new incarnation of the company with the vintage version um, well not vintage but you know this version so if somebody out there would do that that would be swell I uh, am not interested in spending the money to buy the new version so the ink in this is Omos Gray a discontinued ink it's looking a little dark. I will concede that this pen saw very little use the last week. Maybe none. So ink is kind of drying out. I, th I think when uh, this fill is done, which hopefully will happen in the coming week, uh, I will be able to clean it out and move on to something else. Next we have Omas Ojiva, a pen I recently filmed its first impression. Was it back in October? Yeah, October 18th. And uh, was very impressed with it. So impressed that it, it has been inked up ever since. I think this is, I don't know, the second or third fill of this ink in it. I, I've just been enjoying it so much. So this is an Omas, I'm sorry, an Aurora Optima Soleil. Uh, I have a medium nib on this, and the ink is Diamine. Uh, autumn is coming to a close soon, so I think this will be the last fill on this ink. Autumn Oak. Just very nice shading orange ink. Definitely evocative of some of the fall colors you see. My next pen is a Pilot Custom 743. And this is a pen that turns out I need to do a revisit to. I last filmed a video on this on December 8th, 2016, so before I use up this fill of ink, I may have to fill 
at least the writing sample. Uh, it has one of those falcon nibs. So it's supposed to be extra flexible. Now I wrote a letter to my parents and had this ink on one of the pages and they told me, yeah, I can't read it. <laughs> this is uh, a lighter ink. And I agree with that. So, I don't know. I, it's not an ink I'm really enjoying. I'm the biggest feeling I have about this bottle of ink is I can't wait till it's used up and I can use something more fun. But the ink is Lamy Mango. It is a special edition ink. But I agree, it's too pale. You know, I like the concept of yellow inks but most yellow inks actually have they're not a true yellow they're more of an off yellow they have some brown in them or some orange in them or something you know so you can actually see them you know try writing with private reserve buttercup sometime uh, this pen I always enjoy having out this is a Pelican M1000. If you're willing to wait, they can be found at not at good prices, but at much better prices than they're sold for. Uh, I wanted to replace this nib unit with a fine. I don't know that I'll ever do that, you know, because... Oh my god, those nib units cost almost as much as I paid for this pen. Anyway, this is a Pelican M1000, and I am enjoying the medium nib. I just, I know for a fact I would enjoy the fine more because I've used the Moto Lisa's fine. Uh, the ink in this is one I'm also trying to use up. It's a pleasant enough ink. Uh, not amazing, but I like it, and I really love the bottle. Ackermann Grunmark Smaragd. So green grocer. You know, it's it's a very natural green. Some of the green inks you use are very artificial looking, and this one is more natural looking. So I enjoy that. You know, I'm still working on whittling away ink bottles. Uh, my Edelstein Onyx, which you haven't seen yet, is almost gone. This one's got uh, quite a bit further to go yet. But, uh, yeah, working on it. Haven't stopped. This is my uh, Lamy 2000 with the amber black finish. And this one has an oblique broad nib in it. It will be a few years before I end up reviewing this one. Now, I think this ink may actually be in two different pens tonight. One of them's almost empty, the other one isn't. I don't recall off the top of my head which one's which, but this ink is Lamy Turquoise. Um, I have one more bottle of ink in this color family, and it's no longer made to use up after this is gone. And then I will probably buy a bottle of this to be my turquoise ink. I really enjoy this. You know, I did think about some of the others. The, you know, the uh, Iroshizuku Ama Iro is a very beautiful color. But in the end, uh, I love Lamy bottles, and I like this color. And Lamy ink just... Uh, this is pretty problem free. Now this next pen, I'd like to tell you that I've been using it regularly. Uh, I put my Lamy 2000 to rest for, for the month because I always do for the holiday break. And, uh, you know, it, it ran out of ink a few days ago, so I filled this up. But there is a, a first impression that I filmed. And I 
was forced to use, instead of a converter, I didn't have a converter that fit the pen, so I had to use the included cartridge, which was a black cartridge, and I have absolutely fallen in love with the pen. It's not an expensive pen. When you finally see my video on this pen, you're going to be like, really? But it is so cool looking. It's coral colored, and it is just everything I want in a daily writer. It's like the Lamy 2000. It has all that convenience. It writes well. And it's not expensive. So, yeah, th this poor thing has not seen much use. Once in a while at home, I'll write something with it. But this is my Pilot Custom 823. I do like this pen. But I'm just enjoying the other pen. Um, so you're going to have to wait to find out what it is till I publish the review, but... I'm serious, when I get that black ink used up, which is going to be soon, I'm going to immediately clean it out, refill it with something fun. Like, I have some Lamy Coral ink in the basement. I'm going to drag out, and I'm going to refill it, and I'm going to have some fun with that pen. But, you know, it's it's like this. It's it's a, just a fine writer, but uh, just wonderful. You know, this one I have to unscrew. I have to unscrew the back and you know, all that business. And, uh, yeah, wait till you see it. And you'll all go, really? I waited for this? Really? Are you serious? All right. <laughs> so, I like how this pen writes. Um, what I've always loved with this pen is if I do a long note-taking session, a no long note-writing session, you know, if I'm really thinking about my writing. I, you know, I've mentioned that I my writing has kind of evolved so that the handwriting part is more note-taking and I'm using the typewriter a lot more. But uh, that's a good one for just sitting and writing for a, w a long time. Then we have a fun pen. I got out, um, I forget what I'd just emptied out, but this was fun. So this is a Lamy 80. Very 70s looking pen, I think that's when it was released. The ink, or the nib in it is a double broad. And the ink is Califolio Violet, which is a a vintage friendly brand you get you know the, the the colors for the most part are fairly muted but you get a variety of colors I personally think too many in one particular color family but uh, anyway that's a whole other ball of wax I need to use up is all these Califolio inks they are neat to store on a countertop, but then you have to dust them, and you have to dust each individual bottle, and, you know, <laughs> I'm not so into that. I hate dusting. Um, if you saw this bookshelf, like, the books will come off this maybe once every couple of years, and uh, we'll dust it then. And You know, in the meantime, you know, if I see a big pile of dust, and I go, whoops, swipe it off, but... <laughs> All right, my last pen I've been using lately, I enjoy the nib on this. You know, the brand sailor it doesn't do much for me uh, i know everybody raves about their nibs and i just haven't seen it but this is a sailor 1911 standard size has a zoom nib which is kind of a fun nib to you know try at different angles and uh bonus the last time i reviewed this pen was october 4th 2017 so it's been six years so i think it's due for a revisit um, so we have the sailor does not have the type of ink in it that I thought it did so standard is just the size of the pen they come in several different sizes uh, has a zoom nib so I can go upright and be very narrow I want to say that this ink because I recognize the color is noodlers black swan yeah it definitely is in English rose I 
I got lazy over the past summer. I used to have a, well, I still have the notebook, but I used to, every time I'd fill up a pen, I'd write in the notebook, you know, this is the ink I put in it, this is the pen, this is the date I filled it. And then one day I was doing this, filming pens in use, and I just thought, okay, so I don't have a record of the exact day I filled the pen, but I do have an exact record of every single pen and what ink has been in it. It's gone through my hands, and a rough approximation of the date, so why do that? Don't know. So before I go back to the other camera, I wanted to share two fun books that I've recently acquired. One was sent to me. I still owe a uh, thank you letter to this person. Uh, Outwitting Squirrels. 101 Cutting Stratagems to re d Reduce dra Dramatically the Egregious... I, mean, I should stop reading in the preview screen of the camera and just read the damn book. Uh, to Reduce Dramatically the Egregious Misappropriation of Seed from Your Bird Seeder by Squirrels. Bill Adler Jr. And uh, inside, you know, you've got a table of contents, which uh, might be a little overexposed, but Misadventures of Squirrels. Attracting birds and bird personalities. Everything a bird feeder knows about squirrels. What, you know, the last chapter, what to do if you think squirrels are cute. Um, so, I think there will be a lot to read here. There's a few black and white pictures. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I will. Um, let's cover up the name here. I think the name is actually not the person who sent it to me, so um, I think this is a re-gifted thing. <laughs> and then I have this book, which I picked up recently. Bought this totally on my own. That'd be a fun typewriter to own, but check out the typewriter keyboard. Hard to read in this lighting. But it's a math keyboard, so we've got a square root symbol here, we've got a lowercase delta, a mu, uh, I can't remember, I think that's a row, beta, theta, superscripts of numbers up to five, so you can do different powers, a divide sign, a pi, an alpha, percent, uh, slash, which would be, you know, could continue the square root symbol or something else. But it's a typewriter algebra workbook. And this is this, this was all typed on the very typewriter, so 1920s Smith Corona. That would have been a special uh, special purchase back then, where they would have put on custom type slugs and custom keys to replace ones that were there. Like, I don't see quotes on here, and I don't see an apostrophe. So don't use any contractions, don't quote anybody in this this typewriter. How did the heck did they do that? There's a quote. There's a apostrophe. Ah, I get it. It's a comma. It is a comma. Because sometimes it's good. How did you do that? Oh, we rolled till we got an apostrophe made out of a comma. But anyway, it's, it's written for... It has a lot of advice for students and for teachers. Um, you get to see... You know, that's how you would have typed a square root. Uh, I'm, I need to visit their website here for more resources. Um, has a whole section of history. But then you've got, in the table of contents, expressions and equations, linear equations, rational equations, quadratic equations, polynomials, radical expressions. You get in there and it's got explanations. Then you have worksheets. Um, I really like this. Back, I wish I could go back to teaching Algebra 1 just for a year so I could try this. Um, it says, of the eight solutions on this page, only two are correct. Write correct and you find them. For the incorrect ones, identify the line cor containing the error and then solve the equation correctly. That is so clever, and why did I not think of that? And especially, I use LaTeX. I 
have no problem typing math. Uh, I can make it look very good and very professional. Why did I not ever think of that? Uh, there's no graphing in this workbook, but he, you know, he's also trying to show off the typewriter. And he is an experienced teacher. So, uh, I, I liked when I looked at these how, you know, the difficulty level goes up as you go through the exercises. Uh, it builds, it's just, and he's got neat teaching ideas, neat techniques. So if you're a math teacher, don't let the word typewriter scare you off. This is a really interesting book from a teaching perspective also. Maybe a little old school, you know, not too much of word problems, not too much of some of the newer stuff that they do, but, uh, wow. <laughs> Again, I uh, almost want to go back to teaching Algebra 1 just so I can put some of this into practice. So, anyway, I'm going to turn you over to the other camera now. So those are the pens and inks I've been using lately. I am filming this... Uh, Later than planned because of a plumbing incident. I'll get into that in a little bit. But I wanted to mention, uh, I've had some distractions the past month, uh, both good and bad. Um, one of my distractions was I really got into a writing project with a typewriter. <laughs> and you got to see kind of a side piece of that. I uh, did a video. Well, actually, I actually did two typewriter videos. One of them was 27 minutes of me typing until the battery on uh, camera B ran out. Uh, the other one was uh, me discussing writing and composing on a typewriter. And uh, <clears throat> so as one of my pen pals mentioned in a letter, uh, he was surprised to discover that not only did we share a common interest in fountain pens, we also shared an interest in typewriters. And then he said, but of course I should have guessed. <laughs> so yeah, I am interested in typewriters. I, uh, I do own one other good typewriter. It's a Underwood SX from, I guess, the 1940s. And then down in my basement, I have a very elderly Underwood that is in surprisingly good shape it just needs cleaning and i started to do that cleaning and then i thought wait pilot lights <laughs> and uh you know my basement you you probably know my house isn't very big and my basement is even smaller and i just thought nope we're not going to use the solvent down here in the basement with the pilot lights going i decided i'm just going to wait until summer well warmer weather anyway spring maybe and use the solvents outdoors away from the pilot lights. But, uh, yeah, the typewriter is in very good shape. I am surprised I got it for the price I did. And uh, I am looking forward to making it work. It is a heavy, heavy, heavy brute. But uh, it is going to be really cool when I get it working. So, what do you do with three typewriters? I don't know. Wish you had more? <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of the same way about fountain pens. Oh, I've got a fountain pen. Oh, look, I got another. Oh, look, I have 50 of them. You know, typewriters are like potato chips. You can't have just one. <laughs> so uh, I, I just think the, the mechanics of them is interesting. And, I, and I've learned a little bit more. I, I think this antique one, this really old one, is going to be a, definitely a learning experience. Um... I am not somebody who's to the level of let's let's fix some linkages and replace some springs because I don't know where I'd find parts. Oh look, the carriage has a bent rail. I don't know what to do about that, but uh, yeah, I'd like to get to the point where I could uh, do some basic repairs on a typewriter as needed. Uh, there's a very interesting video out, which I'll have to remember to put a link in the video description. It, it's all about how... Me Actually, it, it is the model of the typewriter that's in my basement right now that I'm trying to fix. Um, but it gets into how a mechanical typewriter works, and it is amazing. All the moving parts and all the intricate engineering in those things. I appreciate that because I'm a physics guy. I'm a, you know... <laughs> that's that's my jam but uh i also know i'm not the kind of guy who's going to sit and repair typewriters i 
at least not while I'm full-time teaching. You know, may maybe after I retire, that can be my retirement business, but I, I don't know how much uh, business there is for that in rural North Dakota. Unless I retire somewhere else, I guess there's that option. Yeah, that might be a fun side career. I looked around, I actually found there is a typewriter repair shop in South Dakota uh, near me. I mean, near, three hours away. It's right outside Rapid City in a... I don't know if it's a suburb or a small town, but anyway, I, I checked out the address. It's in somebody's house, so I'm kind of curious what kind of business it actually is. But uh, Anyway, yeah, the, the typewriter repair is actually a more thriving business than you'd expect, but it is hard to get new workers because uh, nobody's training. I don't even know if Underwood exists anymore or Sp well, Smith Corona exists, but they don't do typewriters anymore. You know, uh, <laughs> the world has changed a bit. But still, a lot of fun. Uh, just a nice way to write and compose, and I just really enjoy them. So uh, don't be surprised if the occasional new typewriter flit flits into this channel occasionally. Uh, the, the, the bad thing about typewriters is they take up a hell of a lot more room than a fountain pen. So... I'm never going to have very many typewriters because small house. <laughs> but they are fun and you, you can still find them in thrift stores and stuff at a decent price if you're willing to put in a little elbow grease. As I found my very first one. Hey, in other excitement, um, I wrote teacher shortage on my notes. I, I'm not going to get too deep into that. That's, that's a very deep comment. Com a very deep topic. But I just wanted to mention, uh, we're looking, in North Dakota, we're just looking at uh, a lot of schools that have been un- and I don't have numbers on this right now. I'm hoping to get numbers, but and then I'd like to make a driving video about it. But, but a lot of schools are still advertising, not for next year, for this year, for teachers of core subjects schools that are looking for math teachers, science teachers, English teachers, uh, PE teachers even. Uh, and some of these schools have several openings. You know, oh yeah, we need a new math teacher, we need a new science teacher, and a new PE teacher in one school's case. And that's a scary situation for a school to be in, and I just uh, have wondered what do these schools do to fill the positions. Now I know... Uh, one of those schools, they've got a retired teacher who's not even a math teacher filling in as the math teacher. They've got a aide, a paraeducator, filling in as the PE teacher. And I don't know what they're doing with science. That's just not listed. And it's scary. Um, I, I fear it coming to my district someday. And we were very close to it several times uh, th there are no new candidates out there and meanwhile the college that's nearest to where I teach the one that, su that supplies the majority of our teachers has decided that oh yeah we're just gonna close down our teaching programs in several core subjects great make the teaching shortage worse your public university you supply teachers for the public schools, and yeah, let's just make the teacher shortage worse. One of my uh, former students was in one of those programs that they have now decided to discontinue. Did he change schools so he could get that degree? Nope. He's going to change the degree he's seeking. So there you go. Uh, I did read an interesting story and an, an update actually on one of my driving videos where I talked about rural schools that are dying or dead and I talked about schools that had closed already and some that hadn't and one of the schools I mentioned was Edmore Public School uh, with 20 some students K through 12 this year they have 17 students K through 12 and in October they made the hard decision that yeah it's time to close the doors. This will be our last year. Um, I found it interesting. Their entire teaching staff is from the Philippines. Apparently, they couldn't get anybody from the United States to go to work there. And, you know, again, why would you? 
a school that small, you just think, yeah, you're going to close. Uh, so unless you are at the end of your career and like, yeah, I just need a couple more years. So this looks like a nice, easy place to end it. Uh, why would you go there? So, uh, yeah, they made the decision to close after this year. But holy cow, 17 students. Most of my classes, my individual classes, have more than 17 students. I, uh, I just can't... Mm, my brain doesn't let me picture teaching in a school like that. What do you have, like one or two kids in a class? And, hey, uh, let's talk chemistry today. You... <laughs> I guess you know, it would be a tutoring situation more than a teaching situation. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've never liked really small classes. I like having some size because you get, you get those interactions. You know, sometimes to the detriment because some kids are just really annoying. But, you know, overall, I prefer to have some kids in my class. Uh, you know, having 18 is kind of nice that, that's a nice size for doing different size groups uh, I, I remember uh, the sm year I had my smallest group in physical science I had oh I didn't have as many desks then but it was just nice I had f way fewer desks and uh, the kids could just spread out more but our enrollment has gone up quite a lot where I teach so <laughs> that's no longer an option but uh you know, there, there is too small and there's too big. And uh, Ed Moore was way, way, had sailed way past the point of way too small. Um, to the point, I think, that it's almost doing a disservice to the kids socially. So, Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. So I thought I would share and I'll, I'll, I'll provide links down in the video description. Uh, one other thing came up this summer and I... Never mentioned it on pens and use. Uh, then it came up again more recently. So th this past summer, if you followed the channel, you know that I, one I lost a former student, one that I had stayed in contact with. You know, I was friends with several of his family members and had stayed very much in contact with him. And he you know, he had a very cool career. He, you know, he he spent his graduate school years investigating the metallurgy of asteroids and various. Uh, bodies in the solar system never visited any of them but you know he was investigating it and then he uh went on to work for the state of alaska to, um as an engineer doing uh well i okay as a geologist i should say designing some of their roads and ice roads and some of that crazy stuff that only alaska has and he died and i remember going to dickinson and i went into there was like a is it a Hallmark? Whatever the store is that sells cards. There's a small mall in Dickinson. So I went into this store and I thought, well, I'll pick a, I'm going to pick up a sympathy card. And... Ick. <laughs> they were awful. Um, you know, better days are coming soon. God needed another angel. You know, just all kinds of very... A lot of it I just felt was really inappropriate. Uh, you know, how do you tell a parent, don't worry, I know you just lost your kid, but better days are coming soon. Um, that's not what the family is feeling right then, that, gee, we'll just get past this. I, uh, they, they were awful and very generic, like I said. And, uh, so I ended up walking out of the store not buying a card, and I wrote them a letter instead. Uh, talked about some specific memories with this guy. This Well, he's a man by now, but, you know, I talked about some specific memories and, you know, how much he meant to me and all that. And, uh, you know, that just seemed more appropriate to me. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, I lost one of my colleagues, a former colleague. She was a... She was 72 at the time she passed, but uh, she had come over, uh, she actually started working for my school district the same year I did. There was a very small rural school, not as small as Edmore, but small. They had an enrollment of about 70 kids, K through 12, um, that had closed. 
And so all the teachers that were teaching there came to my school and I don't know if it was by design or luck, but there was a wave of retirements at my school. So uh, they were all able to get jobs. And so she was a math teacher. And she actually taught next door to me for several years and uh, mentored me a bit. You know, I'd been teaching seven years by then, so I, it wasn't a, I wasn't a new teacher, but you know, she was a good source of advice and just somebody to talk to. And uh, anyway, she passed away a couple weeks ago. And, uh, the same thing, I just, you know, you go look at those cards and just, ick. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know if Hallmark, if I'm just too picky or I'm too sensitive or, I don't know, do people get comfort from these generic sympathy cards? Uh, Anyway, I, I just felt none of them said what I wanted to say. So again, I wrote a nice letter to her family. And what's really sad is uh, I've known she was dying. And just a week before she died, I had just sent a letter. And uh, I don't know if she ever got to read it or not. But, uh, you know, I always think back to when my grandfather died. I... I had actually been thought to myself, I should send my grandparents a letter, but I was busy at work and I never wrote it. And uh, it was a week or two weeks later. It wasn't very long after I had that thought that he did die. And uh, I've always regretted since then that I never wrote, took the time to write and send that letter. So, you know, I'm of the mind if I now, because of that, if, if I ever get the urge to send a letter to somebody I'm just gonna send it um, so again in this case I don't know if she ever read it but I got to say some things to her that I wanted to say I mean nice things nice things not, not we're not we're not being mean here but uh, glad I sent it and then uh, you know even if she didn't get to read it I guess the family got to read my communication with her and uh, then, of course, I sent that letter to the family, and glad I did. And, you know, it's just a more personal touch. You know, when you're sending a letter like that, you're not, well, don't make it too long. And uh, you know, as far as your ink, you know, that's not the time to show off your fancy neon orange shimmering ink. That may be the time for a more subdued, like a gray or dark purple ink or something, but... Uh, you know, a letter is a lot more personal. It's something you can read and reread. I see cards more like for a, oh, I've just got 50 wedding gifts and oh my God, I can't write 50 thank you letters. So we, you know, we send out thank you cards and sign them. That, you know, that's, that's where I have gotten to the point that I see cards at, you know, I, I do enjoy the humor of some of them. <laughs> I sent my dad a birthday card one year it was a woman in a wooden bucket and you know bare shoulders bare legs and you know you can't see the rest because it's inside the bucket and uh, the way the cards folded you just see the bare shoulders and bare legs and it says to you on the front i found the perfect thing for you on for your birthday a nude and then you open it up and you know then you find out she's wearing a barrel and it says i just nude it was your birthday <laughs> So, so sometimes those cards make me laugh so they're, they're kind of funny to send but yeah I'm more about send the letter and uh, you know am I wrong I, I think I'm on the right track you know what, what do you do for uh, sympathy cards when somebody's died I just so many of them I just was ick you don't tell a parent that lost their kid Jesus needed another angel or better days are coming soon um, no they're not because yeah the pain will recede but it's never going to go away you know it's parent should never have to lose their kid you know the kid once you get to a certain age realizes that at some point they are going to face losing their parents but uh, parents never shouldn't have to face losing their kid 
So anyway, um, my last topic I just wanted to bring up was uh, my plumbing issues. So I live in an old house. I'm not real sure when it was built. I think it was probably moved to its location from somewhere else just because it's very different. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But anyway, I, uh, I have had water under my sink. And uh, first thing I thought, well, it's the drain because I have had trouble with the drain. Uh, when I first moved in here, I had to take apart the drain and reassemble it because it was leaking. And because of how it's put together, if I don't go in and hammer a certain part up every couple of months, you know, it'll leak when I drain it one of the two sinks because it's a dual kitchen sink or uh, if I run the dishwasher. So I thought it was the drain at first, but uh, eventually figured out, no, it's not that. And then one day I was just hap it was quiet. I happened to be running the, the faucet. I think I was trying to get hot water and got interrupted. And so I turned it off. I went and did whatever was interrupting me. But I remember going back into the kitchen hearing dripping. So I went underneath and uh, the water was actually coming from the faucet. And so I finally figured out that, oh, yeah, there's a lot of parts in this faucet that have just kind of corroded through. Grand. So I bought a new faucet. And then I... Uh, you know, turned off the two valves under the sink. And then I kind of put off doing the repair because that's just miserable. You're laying on your back. You know, you got to unscrew the nuts. And then you, you, the part where the faucet is, you got like a gap that big. You got to reach your hand into and you can't really see it to unscrew the things under the faucet. So I just kept putting it off. But finally on Sunday, I said, no, you got to do it. You got to do it there, squirrel. So I set to. Uh, I was able to disassemble the faucet and, uh, or disconnect it from the water I should say and had a small surprise when uh, one of the um, copper pipes coming up to the faucet behind the shutoff valve started to leak um, I won't bore you with the details of how it's put together but it's not your typical household plumbing I, I think there's a lot of things in this house that I think the previous owner did herself or had her boyfriend do or somebody do that wasn't a professional. Anyway, I uh, got that leak stopped. Went into the living room. I don't know why, but I was in the living room for quite a while. Oh, I think I was trying to figure out there was a piece on the sink that I... Or on the faucet that I couldn't get loose. Um, not really connected to the water, just, you know. Anyway, I went back into the kitchen. And there's a lake in my kitchen. So I cleaned it up, and it the lake was still forming. It just kept running out from under the cabinet. I'm like, oh, shit. I broke something. And I don't know where, but I did. And it's behind the shutoff valves. So I went down into the basement. Um, I have a basement under the old part of the house. And then my kitchen and bathroom are both newer additions to the house. So they just have a crawl space under them. So I went to the crawl space under the kitchen. And crawled in there through all the spider webs and turned off the shutoff valves to the kitchen sink under there, because there were some. And the water was still coming, so I don't know that those shutoff valves work very well, but that's another story. And uh, the leak was still coming, so I ended up shutting off the water completely to the house. Um, Monday morning came, and then I called the plumber and left a message. Monday morning came... I got, uh, <clears throat> I had to turn it on for my shower, and I turned it off again, and the plumber, I'm missing a day in there, I must have called the plumber on Monday. Anyway, um, the plumber came Tuesday, I came home to find my faucet reattached, but a humongous lake in the kitchen. And I have to tell you, this is where luck comes in. I was going to go to a basketball game that night. The girls were playing a home game. And I just decided, no, I got work to do. So I came home. And thank God I did. Because if, if I had waited until that basketball game was over, I hate to think how much damage would have been done to my house. 
Because, yeah, it was quite a lake. So I spent an hour at least cleaning that lake up. And by then I was not in the mood to film. Hey, let's talk about my pilot vanishing point. Ha ha ha. No, that was not going to happen. So, uh, got that cleaned up, shut off the water, called the plumber. He called me again Wednesday, which is today when I'm filming this. And uh, in the morning and asked, and we talked and I said, you know, it, it's still leaking. You know, the plumber, it wasn't the same guy as one of his workers. But anyway, the person that had come to my house had put in, actually had installed the new faucet for me. I guess he saw it laying there and thought, oh, that's what I got to do. But I also, he must have known there was a leak because all my bathroom towels were in the kitchen soaked. So I don't know if he thought he had stopped the leak or what was going on. But anyway, when I talked Wednesday morning, he says, oh, yeah, he, he said he fixed uh, the leak. So there must be another secret leak in there somewhere. So that guy is the one who came today. And uh, it is not leaking. I am running the fan, if you can hear the noise. Uh, because I'm trying to make sure everything is dry. So I'm going to run it for a day or two blowing into that cabinet. And then I'm going to run it for another day or two downstairs in the crawl space. Because I had to crawl from mud. And uh, hopefully get everything dried out so it doesn't mold or rot or do something horrible. But anyway, I uh, today I came home. I have everything is working and there are no leaks. So... Fingers crossed, it's fixed. So, we'll see. But, anyway, that's been my plumbing adventures. As for why I've not been filming this, it just, it's like one thing after another, in including losing the card for my camera, and I, it's not that big of a house, and I can't find it. So, I don't know what I did, but, anyway, life will get better now, right? <laughs> So, anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for putting up with this hiatus on pens and use and anything else from this channel. Except for a weird random typing video. And I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and occasionally typewriters or North Dakota topics, I would invite you to, dis to subscribe. And hey, since... uh house utility disasters have been my theme this fall between the heat going out and the plumbing disaster what's your worst uh, home infrastructure disaster <laughs> let us know down in the comments so i uh, thank you for watching and i'm going to close we'll take you a little bit further up the east river road i uh use this on my typing adventure and uh, we'll just take you a little further up and I don't know where on the road we're at at this point, but uh, we'll just continue. So thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.